Now, following the nuclear summit with North Korea, President Trump uh, is taking a nice little victory lap. Uh, in fact, earlier he posted a few tweets. He said, just landed, a long trip, but everyone can now feel much safer than the day I took office. Well, that's interesting. There is no longer a nuclear threat from North Korea. Meeting with Kim Jong-un was an interesting and very positive experience. North Korea has great potential for the future. Well, that well, that's fascinating. Uh, there is no nuclear threat from North Korea. So, it's over. It's over, guys. We, we can go home. The North Korea problem has been solved. <laughs> uh, now, look, it, I, I've said before, uh, that I hope he is successful. Well, he has been successful at something. We're just not quite sure what. Uh, now, I have another tweet from him uh, first. He says, before taking office, people were assuming that we were going to war with North Korea. Well, you know, when you tweet insults at the North Korean dictator, people kind of get the wrong impression. <laughs> or we at least get that impression, which turned out to be thankfully wrong. Uh President Obama said that North Korea was our biggest and most dangerous problem. No longer sleep well tonight. Okay, then. Well, that's great. So, look, uh, what are the details here for this agreement, right? I mean, look, Donald Trump has a... Uh, 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 obviously, he's, he's very confident that this deal is incredibly strong, right? So it's supposed to be strong. Well, let's see. According to the New York Times, a joint statement signed by the two leaders, did not include a timeline for denuclearization or details about how the North would move forward. Instead, the document, which many hoped would be a roadmap for nuclear agreement, was filled with diplomatic language that had been used in previous statements over the past 20 years. Oh. So. Basically, they've done just about nothing. So you just fill it with a little bit of, you know, diplomatic, flowery language. You shake, you do a photo op, and it, everything's great. Great. No, here's what that tweet was. That's a mission accomplished banner. You remember when George W. Bush uh, in the Iraq War put up that giant mission accomplished banner on the aircraft carrier? That's what this is in tweet form. You're, you're not done. This is not mission accomplished. There's actually more things to do. We signed an agreement that really didn't do a whole lot. Now, of course, there's, uh, you know, people out there saying, uh, or are actually having more of a problem with the fact that it's a photo op. Yeah, I don't really care. And take as many photos as you want. I don't care. Uh, what I do care about is results. Now, what's sad is that we really don't, have much of an agreement we don't have a framework so we haven't really accomplished much that that doesn't mean that we can't move forward and use this as a starting point to actually get that but we actually have to get there don't put up your mission accomplished banner just yet now as far as other uh criticisms oh you're le you're legitimizing a brutal regime yeah, I guess you are, but how many times have we realistically done that? We're friends with Saudi Arabia. You don't think that they're also a brutal regime? They cut people's heads off for apostasy. I'm not saying that that makes it okay to do business with North Korea. What makes it okay to do business with North Korea is the fact that we shouldn't be going to war with other countries. We should be using diplomacy. Look, North Korea is brutal... Yes, to their own people, of course, it's horrible. Iran is sort of the same thing. Saudi Arabia, as I just mentioned, doesn't mean that we can't have peace with those countries. We can't go around invading countries that do human rights abuses. Besides, the UN has accused us of human rights abuses. When, uh, when are we getting invaded? I'm just saying. Look, thinking that we can't engage in peace talks with countries who do human rights abuses is kind of absurd because what it does is that it is that it sets up the premise that we can't ever do business with these countries. Well, if you can't 
do diplomatic business with these countries, then what's the other option? Invade them. War. And I'm not in favor of war. We shouldn't be in favor of war. And that's what I'm trying to avoid because a war would be disastrous for South Korea and Japan uh, and the millions, of course, people in North Korea who are enslaved by a brutal dictator. They would also end up suffering. So war in my in this case is not worth it. Now, of course, this nuclear weapon, uh, these nuclear weapons are a bit of a deterrent uh, from that. And so I think it is very unlikely that they're going to give up any of those nuclear weapons or at least uh, 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 most of them. And so I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what happens. But look, I, I want to be hopeful here, right? Because look, maybe this is a start and ultimately peace is good. We should be fighting for peace, right? But we need a, an actual deal, right? We need something that's concrete that involves verification and so i'm hoping that they can continue to move forward in these uh talks and try to hammer something out now one more thing uh that was mentioned is this is the same thing that we've seen from north korea before so of course we need to come in with caution we need to be careful we need to make sure that this is an actual good deal that does do what it's supposed to do, denuclearize and reduce tensions and actually have peace uh, and make sure that whatever happens ends up preventing another war because in this day and age, we can no longer afford war. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.